I'm Rex. I'm Daniel. This is, oh, a gift from Brad Le- LeClaire. Le- Lafroig. Or as the locals call it, Lap Heroig. No, that's how Wisconsin's call it. Oh, my bad. Because the cross side and the nose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is from Brad LeClaire. Now, do we acknowledge that Brad LeClaire is now a level three whiskey sommelier, not just a demigod? Brad LeClaire is a level three whiskey sommelier and not just a demigod. <laughs> Yes, we do, man. Oh, okay. That's how we, Fair enough. That's how we do that. Yeah. That was the process by which it happened. Fair enough. Right there. He was He's a patron saint full Weddle. No, no, he's full Weddle for sure, but there, there, there might, I don't know. There's so many ceremonies, I'm having a hard time keeping track. Hey, Brad. Thanks for the whiskey. Okay. So, this is a typical, this is Lafroy, but it's a special edition that they released. Yeah. And it's finished in Fino sherry casks, among other things. Uh huh. Right, and remember, Fino is yeah. the the lighter, uh, all floor aged, which means they let the floor kind of grow on the top of it. It's a minimum two years old sherry, and, sherry. but it can typically it's between four to six, sometimes seven. But um, so it's one of it's the, the white, light dry sherry. It's one of the lesser used sherries, as far as for just straight up drinking. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, because you hear about the Pedro Jimenez all the time. You hear about the... And it's, I mean, I, Ola, I should say, as far as for whiskey finishing, you, you're, it's going to be rare to find a Fino finished whiskey. You hear about the Oloroso sherry all the time. Yeah. But where the Fino... The thing about this is because they let that level of floor uh, grow on top yeah. of the sherry, mm-hmm. it gets all these really heavy minerally yeah. notes to it. So, sh- But the thing is that Lafroig is already mineral mineral heavy. Yeah, because on the nose here, I'm thinking uh, you know, Lafroig is always already going to be... Isla Scotch was just smoky, and you're not going to find a tremendous amount of sweetness until I'm having you, a hard time separating the until you spend yeah. some time acclimating and to do uh, a non-sweet finish on just a smoky non-sweet type of Isla. It's like, man, you are stacking up some stuff that you need to be going into a whiskey like this, eyes wide open. Maybe toasted almonds. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. So, so I'm being generous. Let's start with the the obvious notes that. Lafroig, salt, water. iodine. Yeah, yeah, that's that kind of phenolic richness and the tail end of smoke and ash. Yeah. Now, but seawater and and then wood. Now we can go hunting for the subtle stuff. Damp wood. Oh, okay. I can see it in the finish. So it starts as oh, that's Lafroig, and then right before it goes straight to the ashy Lafroig finish, yeah. it switches to a sweet finish. So, yes, if you know your way around an For island. a Laphroaig. For a Laphroaig, yeah. This is by no means categorized as a sweet whiskey. But once you are used to swimming in these flavors, you can start to pick out kind of fun notes like that. And right now, the iodine note is a dominant note for me on the taste. Mm. No, I'm getting... Ooh, wow, the sweetest Laphroaig I think I've no. tasted in a while. No. There's so much going. Here's the thing. There's so much going on in this glass. Yeah, a lot. There's so much, and it's a wall of flavor. What was the proof? 51.8 percent, almost 52 percent. And God, there, there's something that is different than the classic Lafroy tin, which is the one everybody can get anywhere. Can we compare? Let's compare. Veronica Himmel. My first whiskey experiences were great ceremonial bonding experience with my dad while watching war movies. Champions League or World Cup soccer games, there it is. boxing matches from Las Vegas at 3 a.m., <laughs> or Grand Prix racing competitions. What do you associate your first whiskey drinking experiences with? Are those experiences still a part of the fabric of who you are today? Do you know what your experiences are? No, no, what, your first whiskey experience, does it still define your current preferred whiskey experience? Uh, Like the thing you can still to this day recall as a whiskey experience, not just that one time I tried a whiskey. So the first time I like, ever had, here's the thing, I'm embarrassed. Here, by the way, if you hear music, they're doing a class. There's, you're not crazy, there's music. The first whiskey experience was in a cocktail. The first several were whiskey cocktails. Does this count? Yeah. Okay. So this was like in downtown Austin. This is 4th yeah. Street. This is on the roof of a speakeasy. Right. Right. At night you see like the giant skyscrapers with all the lights and like the breeze coming through and you're hanging out with your friends. So that experience of hanging out with your people outside is like, yeah, absolutely. I love doing that. Right. I love doing that. It's phenomenal. Yeah. 
My first, what I would consider to be my truly, this is whiskey experiences for me, yeah. was I began to make a habit of always ordering Irish whiskey at shows when I was playing a show. And I became known for it. Like Daniel walks into the gig, the bartender pours a shot of some Irish whiskey and hands it to him and he walks away. Right. Like I don't even ask for whiskey, that's just, I. and so it's still to this day when I walk into bars, some of my first inclination is to crave an Irish whiskey, <laughs> but it's in there. So the this comparison, is it's the same whiskey. This one lacks the mid-range sweetness that this one has, but it's a very small difference on the nose. They're, okay. They're very close. They're very similar whiskeys. Add a mid-range honey and you have... Yo, okay, okay. No, you had me. Mid-range honey. But if you want to get 90% of the way there... Lafroy 10. Yeah, yeah. for Lafroy 10, you're 90% of the way there. Okay, let's move to our gift whiskey from Patrick Cohn. Mm. It was definitely full Weddle. At this we, point. Man, we got to come up with. There's so many full Weddles now. We got to come up with ceremony. Yeah, Weddle needs to just keep his own ceremony. Hey, ceremony, Weddle guys. Ceremony Google. Uh, create a ceremony for that's not full Weddle, <laughs> please. All right. Thank you, Siri. See, I have an idea what the ceremony would be. I just need like three and a half uninterrupted hours and a lot of craft supplies. <laughs> And we can pull this off. I really don't even want to know what that, <laughs> where we're headed with that. Del Bac. Oh. Yeah. So remember yeah. we did their winter release? Now Del Bac is New Mexico, Arizona, it's or Nevada. Tucson. Tucson, Tucson, Arizona. Tucson, Arizona. Okay. Tucson, Tucson, Arizona. Hamilton Distillers, and we love their products. Yeah. They're mesquite smoking things, yeah, among yeah, yeah. others. But uh, remember we did a winter edition? I do. It was 2017. Okay. Patrick got us the 2018 release. Okay. Yeah. So Patrick Cohn, you full little, yeah, thanks bro. Cool. <laughs> Appreciate it. Patrick's just too. So uh, here's the thing. Here's the cool thing about Patrick. We've always known that Patrick is amazing. Yeah. All of the other distilleries in Texas yeah. are starting to discover Patrick Cohn <laughs> because he's showing up and like just becoming one of the regulars yeah, at yeah. random distilleries around Texas. Patrick Cohn. And so all of a sudden we were at a distillers dinner last week right. before the Texas Whiskey Festival. Right. I had two different distillery. Uh, master distillers and head distillers and distillers walk up and be like, so Patrick Cohn, <laughs> like he's a cool dude. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know Patrick Cohn? I was like, oh, we know Patrick Cohn. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. The last time I saw Patrick was at Brian Brushwood's new property mm. last weekend right? on Saturday. And I show up, I go, what the hell, Patrick Cohn? <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> so we walked around Brian's property, yeah. Don't okay, watch. so this one is a really small release for 2018, 390 bottles. Man. And Patrick got us one of them. So the thing with Del Bac, and I, I have yet to have a Del Bac whiskey that didn't have this just intense, saturated uh, depth to the whiskey. Like even on the nose. On I the love it. It's almost Texan in the sense of that's a that dense flavor profile is yeah. such a Texan attribute. Yeah, yeah. it's got to be Southern climate. It's got to be the heat. Yeah. So they mix together uh, just a bunch of different barrels from the warehouse to create these releases yeah. with no uh, no limits. Yeah. Just let's create an interesting whiskey. Yeah. Right. That's so cool. So they're different each year. Yeah. This one, I think, is significantly better than my memory of the 2017. Okay. Now. The nose. There's a sweetness to this. Well, but hold on. Before okay. we get into the sweetness, yes, though, the nose before, is mesquite. Before, yeah, you got the mesquite, and then that that the wood is so saturated, it's almost savory. Almost. Yeah, this savory. is this is a meaty yeah. nose. Nathan Thompson Avellino. And then, wow, this is really great. Yeah, this is the kind of whiskey. This is not not a background whiskey. No. this is like the hero whiskey that's going to grab everybody's is, attention. If you pour this at a table of four or five whiskey drinkers all hanging out. Right. The table will go silent for about two minutes. Yeah, they'll go, Whoa, while everyone goes, what the hell is going on here? Wow. It's like when your food gets delivered at a fancy restaurant and mm -hmm. for all of a sudden you realize no one's talking anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. You're just communing with it. It's like, wow, this is good. Okay, I'm going to take it. Oh my God. And so it's so, on the nose you're bracing yourself. On the nose you're, bra you're bracing no yourself. Need. It does end with an ashy dryness, but but here's what I'll say. It's a whiskey Del Bach for me has always been something that I would recommend carefully. Yeah. Based on who is going to be drinking it, because it's definitely a ah, oh, it's like all a Freud. Like you don't just step into it. Right. It's like yeah, you're going to tackle this thing, right? But this yeah is not that. It has it has all that smoke richness, but not aggression. 
This is maybe the most perfectly proofed, perfectly br blended. What, what is the proof? 50. Okay. This is the most perfectly proofed and perfectly blended Delbach that I have ever tried. It does. It takes you right up to this big, giant ground swell of flavors. And, and then, then lets you off the hook. It takes you right up to the ceiling, and then it's like, hey, it's all good, buddy. I'm not gonna hurt you. You know what it is? It's this. It's... <laughs> No, what I was thinking is, we uh, we used to have these... You, know, you do that with your friends when you're oh, in yeah. school, you'd be like, like the... <laughs> we, uh, I used to have this thing where we had boxers growing up, you know? Right. And they were really good at missing you and, and when they charged you. Right. But if you were down on your knees and you'd get this boxer running from like 100 feet away right. at full tilt, right. like straight at you, and you just hold your ground, you're like... Aah! And then right at the last second, they do a swerve. Right. And then they immediately spin tail and come back, start licking your face off. Right. It's the taste of licking your face. Yeah, off. this is that like full tilt, come okay, on. Okay, okay. And th this is chicken. This is this is playing chicken. So, this swerves first. We keep, <laughs> we keep giving analogies. Yeah. Let's give some nuts. Yeah. So, it's, it's, it, this is outlier. This is unique. This is special. This mesquite wood. Yeah, but with like a dark berries note. Yeah, charred. Uh, I keep wanting the same molasses, but, Me it's, too. Not, but it's not quite molasses. It's not. It's too smoky for it, molasses. It's, 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 it, the sweetness is as dense and yeah, heavy so as molasses. That's what I was going to say. It has yeah. the density of molasses, but yeah. it's not molasses. Oh, uh, and then there's like that dry ashy note. That's in there. That's in there. There's even a slight light um, pastry, uh, like a like a tart, right? Like a, like, or not tart, like, um, like, a, like a fruit kolache. Right? Like with like the little fruit layer of yeah. apples or pears or something and then the yeah. bread. Yeah. So that dense doughy sweetness. And then just the black oh. and crispy bits to that pastry. Oh yeah. It's black and little crispy bits. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Looks like I'm moving to Tucson. How dare you make Dave Young. God damn. Dave Young! <gasps> get, we have a whiskey mule now. Get your spare room ready. Dave Young. Rex and I are headed your way. No, no, no. Just send us the whiskey, dude. We don't need to see you. We don't need to travel. Mm. I don't even want it yet. No, no, no. I want to go because tacos. Because Tucson has dude, we're some so, real. We're no, 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 no. For tacos. It's a different thing, man. Yeah. Tucson tacos are not the same as Austin tacos. Okay. All right. All right. I'm, I'm suspicious of your taco. Plan. No. No. Okay. We got uh, Robert Decker. Probably a dumb question. Oh no. Go ahead and read that because I have a question about Tucson. Maybe anybody from Tucson can answer. But what's with putting coins or coasters on some kind of stopper over a Glen Cairn? I've seen the boys do it, MBs and the Scotch Just Dummies do it. Does it enhance the whiskey or just keep the aroma in the glass? It, lets, it lets you live with the whiskey longer. Yeah, so uh, you want to let a whiskey open up and breathe, right? but you also don't want it to go so far that it gets watery. Yeah. So there's a balance of like, let's keep this what it was. Yeah. And I want to, right? So, however, there's another thing. In Texas, yeah. in the spring all the way to fall, yeah. bugs galore. Oh yeah, the bug in the thing. There. And I sit on my deck almost every night. Right. Everyone goes to bed. Right. I'm going to go out to the deck with the laptop and work or with a book and read. Right. And I always pour a whiskey. And if you don't put something on your whiskey glass, yeah. you will have about five minutes and you'll pick it up and there'll be like three blood bugs floating in it. Protein. Like, damn it. Protein. So I cover the whiskey to protect the whiskey from intruders. Mm -hmm. You ever heard the joke of the old English and the Irishman and the Scotsman go into a English, bar and order a drink? No. Right? And the Englishman gets his drink, there's a fly in it. Okay. And he's like, oh, no, no. Uh, excuse me, Barton, there's, there's a fly in my drink. Yes, <laughs> yes. Could you please replace that with something else? And he's like, oh, my apologies. He brings a new one. Yeah. Irishman walks up to get his and there's a fly in it. And he's like, ah, oh, it. Yeah. I just it just drinks the whole thing down, right? Yeah. I just just drink the whole thing, just protein and all, right? <laughs> yeah. And then the Scotsman gets up there, and there's a fly in his whiskey, and he reaches down in the glass, he grabs a fly, and he pulls it out by the wings, he starts shaking it, he goes spit it out, spit it out. <laughs> Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. Do you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink. May you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.